Hello everybody, it's Ryan Liberty. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is learn helplessness? Oh. Ooh. Ah. All right, so here we are. We're going to answer the question, what is learned helplessness? If you couldn't tell from that intro, it's something that sucks. And we're going to talk about a little later how to get out of learned helplessness. So I've got notes I'll be referencing throughout the video because I always like to do my homework before I just go talking about something. And learned helplessness. Let's get into what it is. So Martin Seligman, he was the creator, the founder of Positive Psychology. Him and his team in 1967, they came, they discovered learned helplessness. And they discovered this because they were doing research into operant conditioning. And just briefly, operant conditioning is when you're trying to um, get a specific outcome and you do that through punishment or reinforcement of behaviors. So they were studying operant conditioning and they came across learned helplessness. Now learned helplessness is basically when you experience something over and over and over again that you're not able to change and eventually you hit a point where you don't feel like it's possible to change and you just give up and that's learned helplessness. So you may have heard of this before in the experiment with the dogs and they get shocked and they leave the cage door open and I'm not going to get into that. I want to get into a example that I think works a little bit better because the experiment was done with humans uh, and hopefully that'll give you an idea of what learned helplessness looks like in action. So in 1975, Donald Hiroto um, him and his team tested three different groups of people, and they did it over the course of two days. So the first day, um, group one, they were subjected to a very annoying, loud noise, and if they wanted to shut off the noise, all they had to do was push a button, and they figured that out pretty quickly. The second group got the loud, annoying noise, and no matter what they did, and believe me, they tried a lot of different things, there was no way to shut off the noise. It just continued. And then the third group just didn't have a noise. There was nothing special about what happened to that group. So what's interesting is what happened on the second day. So the second day, they came back, and again, there was this loud, annoying noise, However, in this case, the, all they had to do to get rid of the noise was move their hand 12 inches. So they really didn't have to do much of anything. Um, and very quickly, group one, remember the group who was able to push the button to stop the noise, and group three, the group that didn't have the noise at all, they both figured out pretty quickly that all they had to do was move their hand because they went to do something to stop the noise and they stopped it just by moving their hand. The second group is the interesting group because that's the one that wound up with learned helplessness. They, for the most part, did not figure out how to turn off the noise. Even though all they had to do was move their hand, they didn't figure that out because they were conditioned from the first day to feel like there was nothing that they, that they could do to stop the noise. So they basically just sat there and kind of bared the brunt of it. Um, and that's learned helplessness. It's when you experience something over and over again, and no matter how hard you try, you feel like you can't change it. So when you finally are given the opportunity to be able to change it, you don't discover that you can because you've learned that it wasn't going to work. And you may be able to see the parallels here when you look into um, disorders like trauma disorders or anxiety disorders or depressive disorders where we have these feelings of... I've tried, I've tried to fix this, I've tried to do things, and it's not working, so I give up. Um, which is bad, usually, because it keeps us from being able to move forward with our treatment and discover new ways that we can get treatment. So, learned helplessness sucks. How do we stop learned helplessness? So, uh, one thing that was interesting in this study that was done is they realized that about a third of the people in that second group who had learned helplessness, there was still a third of those people who were able to figure out that they could move their hand and stop the, uh, the annoying sound. Um, so they tried to figure out, okay, so why did this group figure it out? Why did they have this pattern? Because it wasn't just in that instance, they realized this type of person always tries. They don't really get learned helplessness. They, they even when they're in those situations that normally produce learned helplessness, they still figure out a way. They're still always trying to change. So what was it about these people that made them so resistant to learned helplessness? So they figured out there are three factors about these people 
that add up to basically an optimistic attitude, but let's get into the three factors that are important here in resisting learned helplessness. So the first factor is that um, the, all three of these revolve around the way that they view a setback in their life. And the first way that they view it is that it is local. And what that means is that when they have a setback, they focus on it being one instance of a setback. They don't reference all the other times that something similar has happened um, as a determination of how this way is going to go. They see it as its own individual experience and they treat it accordingly. So that's the first factor is they view setbacks as local. The second factor is that they view setbacks as temporary. So uh, they don't feel like this is permanent. This is the way it's always going to be every time I'm in this situation. They see it as something that will at some point um, change. At some point it will be different. So they view it as temporary. That's the second factor. And the third factor is that they view setbacks as changeable. They never see them as always the same, always permanent, not that I don't have a way to do anything about it. They always look for a way that what their situation is, is changeable. So you've got local, uh, temporary, and changeable are the three factors that help combat learned helplessness. But there's also something else that you can do, which is to work on resiliency skills, which is related to trauma resilience. So uh, if you're interested in that, I have a video that you can check out on ways that you can build resilience. But that is learned helplessness. And I'm curious to learn from you, what ways have you experienced learned helplessness, maybe through a disorder that you have, Maybe there's just a situation you went through in life where you tried and you tried and tried and eventually you just gave up. How has it shown up for you? And if you were able to overcome it, what helped you to overcome it? I'd like to know. So go ahead and comment below. And thank you for learning about learned helplessness with me today. Do you give a f about mental health? If you do, then I've got some free coloring pages I think you'll enjoy. Go ahead and click to get those. If you like this video, I have many more on YouTube. Subscribe to see the rest of them. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below for the rest of the community and share with a friend. As always, I want to remind you that your life matters. Nobody can question your worth. However it is that you're feeling, whatever it is that you're going through, it's okay and you are loved. Thanks again for watching.